Great. Um, I'm going to start off by reading a poem that I shared a little while ago, and I'm pretty sure that I got censored for it. So if you follow me on Instagram, you may have read it. Um, if you only follow me here, I posted it and then I, I was like blacklisted <laughs> from Facebook for a couple days. So I'm going to see if I can get around it by reading it. And I'm reading it because I want to share about the sacred feminine pathways of spiritual awakening. And for those of you that know me, you will know that that is my specialty. Hello, welcome. And I want to explore a little bit with you what that is, what are feminine pathways of spiritual awakening, and what does that mean? So to start off, we're starting off with a poem because the feminine is not linear or straightforward. All right, here we go. How could her color be anything else than red? Red like the rose that opens velvet petals, intoxicating the bees with scent and guarded by thorns that prick. Red, red as the blood that seeps and pulses life through a red, red heart, a coiled thrumming muscle of red, red and throbbing juices of oceanic current that flows like a vulva made wet and red, red with tissue bleeding the flesh of potentiality, a red, red meat of all life laid bare, flayed by tooth and claw until the gush of red and the tongue that licks and sips and sucks and bites into the red, red apple, the original awakening pill that was red, a nectar of red dripping down her chin, a palpitation of magmic proportions that bleed creation and destruction, a fire of red, wild and raging, shimmering with the embers of warmth and hearth, the rosy and red of a love that is home, that is infinite and eternal holding, strong like a red, red ruby, crystallized juice with a fractal brilliance and sparkling light, reaching far into infinity as red, red now seeing only red, red, a wild, feral primality that spits up an irrepressible urge to be lovingly savage and true, to be taken by too much laughter and caught in the rapture of red, red the color of sex and sin and violence and love, the color of blood and lips and shame and shamelessness, red, her color is red, for red is the color of life, a life drips life. Oh, and to be life, to live, to live and be alive. I am here for the red, red life. I am here for her. How could her color be anything else but red? Mm. So I wrote this piece as I was dropping into the frequency of the sacred feminine current of reality. The goddess, the imminent divine, the divine that is life, that is all of life. It is an erotic current, and yet it is beyond the sexually focused eroticism that we tend to think of, the pornographic eroticism. That's not her. No, that's a narrowed sliver of who she is. She is that throbbing heartbeat, that pulse of aliveness and that presence that lies behind all things. She is within us. She is relational. And one of my deepest explorations is how to find her. What are the medicines, the nectar and the nourishment that the sacred feminine offer us, particularly at this time on our planet in which we are aching and hungry for her because she has been absent and suppressed for so long. 
So I'm offering a course, a six month deep dive into the feminine mysteries called Imminent Rapture. And I chose that name because I was sitting in front of my uh, Kali tapestry, it's to my left here, and asking, who are you? Who, what is the, the word or the phrase that embodies her? And she's usually best captured by paradox. Imminent is that which is found within. It is the pervasive, the omnipresent, and she is found within. She is a descent. We do not have to reach for her or seek for her. She is already here within. She is imminent. And rapture, rapture is that intense feeling of pleasure that is her frequency, that is her current so imminent rapture is the goddess, the sacred feminine. But more than that, she's you. She's your awakened and self-actualized state of being. She's the birthright of all of us who are born into this human experience, divinely embodied, divinely human, holy human. So what are the mysteries of the feminine and and there's an element of that which of course we can't reach because it is a mystery it's something that must be explored and felt through the guidance of the body through your body as a spiritual teacher you come to know her mysteries but there's a few aspects of sacred feminine work that is in contrast to sacred masculine work or um, patriarchal pathways of spiritual awakening and practice of which we've been inundated for the last several thousand years. So the sacred feminine is about a descent rather than ascending or transcending. The feminine is about descent, descent into the body, into the earth and into the present moment into the darkness, into our shadow, into the underworld. The feminine is about descending into our own humanness. That is the medicine that she brings, that we don't need to ascend into ways of light, that the magic and the juice and the, uh, the blood of our own humanity is actually the gift that we're yearning for and seeking. So sacred feminine pathways are descent Feminine pathways are embodied and her pathways of awakening are in and through the body. The body itself is actually a sacred instrument. And so these pathways engage the body as such. It is both a living temple for the divine frequency, but more than that, it is made of the divine. Our very cells hold the intelligence of goddess. Our body is our spiritual teacher. And so sacred feminine work descends into the body and opens to the body to teach us, to allow it to reveal its sacred scriptures that have been written on our own bones through our DNA. So feminine wisdom is embodied wisdom. And that embodiment piece is also about being integrated in our experience, that it's not just something that is a philosophy, but is actually, how am I holding it? How am I living it? Is there, what is my way of being in this that moves it out of something that is theory and is actually engages it as something that is practical for something to be embodied, mean that it's, it's lived, it's expressed moment to moment. Sacred feminine pathways are pleasurable and, and perhaps a better word is that they are sensual because it is not to say that feminine practices are necessarily without discomfort. In fact, there's a way in working with the feminine and opening to the feminine that actually allows us to be with discomfort and even brings us into alchemical practices of dilating so deeply, so being so deeply receptive to all sensation, to all of life, that even painful experiences can be transmuted into ecstasy. So there is that element of alchemy within the feminine. 
And she works through sensation, engaging all of our five senses. Uh, there's that beautiful phrase, all love, all acts of love and pleasure are my rituals. And the pathways into the sacred feminine know when to push, but they also know when to be soft and gentle and how that gentleness can create just as powerful an opening for healing and transformation as can the intensity and force. And uh, much of the work that I do involves a re-engagement with our sensual body, with our pleasurable body. And again, this is a pleasure and an eroticism that goes far beyond uh, simply sex into a way of uh, vibrant aliveness. She is imminent. She is within and all pervading. So feminine pathways are found by going within your own system. She's also imminent in the world around us, which brings us into another element of her, which is the feminine is relational. The goddess is relational. She is beckoning to us through every flower and every blade of grass, through every face that we see. The goddess is smiling and inviting us into deeper knowing. So she is imminent within and within all things. And she is relational. She's inviting us into intimate connection. And it's through the relational dimension with each other that she actually gets catalyzed and activated. Sacred feminine work is about wholeness and integration. No parts are unholy. And so we actually seek out the aspects of ourselves that have been discarded. She sits at the heart of your shame. She is the nectar that drips through the holy wound. She knows that it is our humanness that is holy, that there isn't a separation between our humanity and the divine. And so her work, her pathways invite an integration of all aspects of ourselves rather than there being parts that are good and parts that are bad. Um, and of course, one of the major ways that we can see this is the virgin harlot split in which we have the good girl and the bad girl. Sacred feminine pathways are about welcoming in all aspects of ourselves and particularly that which we have deemed unholy or shameful or wrong. There is, uh, as Jung would say, a gold within the shadow. And so in this work, we seek out the nourishment and the gold, the truth that is within our own darkness, the medicine that we receive by entering into our own wound and recognizing that our wounding itself holds a holiness. This is about being holy and holy human and embracing of our full humanity and embracing of life itself and why we are here, not to escape, not to ascend or transcend, but to be fully and totally and vibrantly alive. And in fact, that is what the sacred union is. That is the heroes gamos, is the union of spirit and matter. And that we are that right now it is not something that we have to strive or work for or earn. She is a part of us. She is emanating from us already right now. And so we have only to remember and pay attention and remember how to listen and occasionally polish the glass just a little bit more so that she can shine, so that you can shine, for she and you are one. The divine feminine is the element of being one with the divine, not separate. We are one with the divine. And as we enter into that truth, it is utterly transforming that you are a divine being in physical form right now. Nothing to work for, nothing to earn for. You are that right now. So this is the body of work that I offer in Imminent Rapture, which is a six month deep dive into the feminine mysteries, into these feminine pathways of spiritual awakening. 
It's a six month program. So we get to go really deep in a container of women that are seeking the truth of themselves. And we explore the feminine as she has existed culturally. We explore her as she exists within us. What are our parts? What is our personal relationship to our expression of the feminine? And we explore her as the divine, as goddess. And how do we make contact or rather, how do we discover that we are already in contact with her? So if this excites you or sparks something for you, please reach out. would love to talk with you more about this program. We start next week and I only have a couple seats left. The circle forming is just absolutely an incredible, incredible women and really looking forward to this container and diving deep into the luscious nectar that is uh, her ways. So I'll be hopping on live again tomorrow to talk about the virgin harlot split as uh, the main dichotomy that severs the feminine and how we can reclaim both of those aspects. So uh, whether you're interested in the imminent rapture or not, I invite you to check out that video tomorrow. Um, there's just so much meat in the exploration of um, these polarities within the feminine. And that's what I got. So thank you for chiming in and let me know if anything sparks in the comments. Reach out to me and direct message if you would be interested in diving into these delicious waters. Take care.